the Northmen have been defeated, the Queen has been rescued, and the King is somehow still alive. <laughs> Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Crusader Kings 3 in our Empire of Albion series. So, if you're watching this in what I call the live audience, as the episodes come out, this episode is going to be a little bit late today. And let me talk to you a bit about why. Because this is a gameplay reason. I actually just nixed a recording because I went for probably about 10 minutes exploring the possibility of diverging culture. In other words, creating the Scottish culture manually. Because the event hasn't fired yet. And I thought, how nice would it be if this could be Constantine's thing before he passes? I'm a little bit skittish about this because it's 9.05. I was expecting the event to have fired by now. And just to give you a little bit of context for this, I've done some Googling to sort of remind myself how this works. And I haven't gotten clear answers. And I haven't had the time to actually dig into, for example, another Let's Play or another specific recorded gameplay moment from recent versions of the game where someone definitely got the Scottish culture activated. So there's mixed kind of signals when you look that stuff up. There are some people who will say, oh, it's going to fire at a certain time and you just have to wait for it. But then there's this undercurrent of, was that just the way that it was in CK2 and maybe it's not that way anymore? I literally don't know. And that's why I'm skittish because there's a part of me that wants to go ahead and be the Kingdom of Scotland, you know? And I want to have that. And there was an idea that I had of, it's kind of appealing to let Constantine be the one to do that. After, you know, conquering all this territory and consolidating so much ground. And we right now are the strongest kingdom in the British Isles, in Albion. By far, we're the strongest. So in some ways, it was a nice tribute to him. It was a nice narrative touch that, like, maybe he would be the one that starts Scottish culture. Because otherwise, you know, if we just wait for the event to fire, especially if it takes another hundred years, we're going to have all this controlled. The empire is going to be reformed before we are Scottish rulers of Scotland. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit more time. That's kind of the reason that I decided to, to nix the recording and start over. Because I just decided, you know, maybe we can go another few episodes. And whether or not Constantine's still alive, I'm not super wedded to that idea. Um, we have three duchies we can create, by the way. We're going to wait until Donald is on the throne to create those. But that's kind of what I... That's what I've been mulling around in my head for the morning so far. Now that we are not at war and the army is mostly recovered, it doesn't look like you have any allies, sir. Sucks to be you. <laughs> So we can conquer this high chiefdom and it would be over very, very quickly. Um, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go straight to their capital and end this war. Again, now that the queen is... Oh, wow. <laughs> Not only is she back, apparently they're happy to be reunited. Oh, can we hold court? Yes, we can. Let's go ahead and do that. My beneficiary Adelaide approaches me with a spring in her step. My liege, Adelaide says, full of excitement, I have a great idea that can bring you either money or fame. You have amassed quite the collection of artifacts, my lord, so why not put them on display? You could charge for viewing your collection or for free so that more people will view it. She clears her throat before continuing. People do have a tendency to want the things they see. So this is my antiquarian. So the downside might be that more people will try to claim your artifacts. Hostile artifact schemes will become more common if I say I want people to pay to witness but a glimpse of my glory. Uh, we would lose lots of stress because we're arrogant. And then we, can, we would have a paid artifact exhibition for three years. It's only for three years. We can say some people must see to believe and that includes the less fortunate. Hostile artifact schemes will become more common. So we could have free... Oh wow, this would boost prestige by 10% for three years. Or we can say it's not worth inviting the risks. I'm going to go ahead and say if people must see to believe, or some people must see to believe, and that includes the less fortunate. That includes the less fortunate. The woman who approaches my throne is clearly a commoner. My lord, she begins her speech, 
I represent the local community of Lothian. In the last few months, our cemeteries have been plagued with the disappearance of bodies. All has been dug up and left no trace. At first, we feared wild animals or obscure powers at work, but then your own court physician was caught red-handed hauling the dead away for her experiments. Please put a stop to this blasphemy. Okay, so we can kind of support her in her scientific endeavors. We could say guards arrest the grave robber. Or we can just say, you know what? Could you just stop? And the, you know, the physician wouldn't like it. But Lothian would actually gain a 10-year popular opinion bonus. So, you know what? Let's go with that. Elskithu, just cut it off. Just, just cut it off. I recognize the next set of petitioners immediately. They are Lord Mayor Storler of the East Riding and Reeve O'Shea of Berwick. A pair that are well known for their intense rivalry. Worryingly, they are not arguing with each other. My lord, begins Sterla. I have to tell you that the people are intensely dissatisfied with your queen Madrun. Excuse me? We fear that her recent behavior has not become a good and loyal queen Madrun. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. So this, there's a 74% chance we could gain some diplomacy experience, and also both of them already have a pretty good opinion of me. Or we can say, I shall speak to Queen Madrid. No, she didn't. This is just the game not interpreting what happened correctly, unfortunately. So the, the shenanigans continue a little bit. This happened with the last episode with, you know, a lot of events at the Grand Wedding treating it as though it was the first time we were married when we clearly were not. It clearly was not. So let's say, I'm sure if you looked at this another way, you successfully convince Sterla and O'Shea to drop the matter. Nice. 300 diplomacy lifestyle experience. And my business here is done also, I think. Oh no, okay. We might be able to host a grand tournament or a hunt soon. That would be kind of cool. But for now, let's finish up this war. I want to go ahead and defeat this army. While I have a chance, it looks like one of my armies is slightly ahead of the rest. Protecting against schemes, many dangers lurk in the shadows. Uh, yeah, I know, that's why I have a spy master who's awesome. Although, truth be told, there may be other spy masters that are better soon. Looks like a grand wedding is happening. Speaking of that spy master, wow, that was timing. Alright, let's go ahead and join this grand wedding. Uh, the path... Uh, is primarily maritime, so mountaineer, not necessary. Let's hire experienced captains and head that way. Starting to get a little bit more experienced with that particular interface. Yep, I can't wait. All of those events are very new to CK3. They're fantastic, but they're very new. All right, so let's go ahead and just attack the capital of Connacht directly. And then we might pretty soon be able to take Ireland. All of it. Completely. Derelict ship. The sea is calm and forgiving today. Still is a boulder and a powerful wind at our back to boot. It seems it'll be an easy day for the rowers below, but then I spot the mangled corpse of a ship buried nose first into some jagged rocks just ahead. There doesn't appear to be any survivors, and the rocks would be no trivial thing to navigate, yet I feel compelled to go and investigate this mysterious wreck. So we might find something of value. It's not dangerous, it's just a particular risk. You find nothing. Spent some prestige. Well, that sucks. That's a shame. Alright, so let's get this done. And hopefully it'll just be this siege. Alright, so Grand Wedding. So my intent right now is recreation. I could try to murder What's-His-Face, because somebody pointed out at the previous Grand Wedding that the murder actually didn't happen, which, you know, fair enough. But it doesn't look like that particular character is present. Yeah, they're not present, unfortunately. Cause mayhem and increase your stress loss with potential unfortunate consequences. Mischief. Let's just go for recreation. We're trying to have a nice, solid end to Constantine the First's reign here. So I don't. I'm not particularly fond of the idea of messing around. He's already kind of not mentally clear. 
I look around myself in excitement. Everywhere I lay my eyes on, there are mingling guests, flowers on every surface, buzzing servants with loaded dishes, and a very proud host, Marmerica Khan. Checking on the final details, the nervous but excited spouse, Marmerica Khan and Gormio, are standing at the ready. I cannot wait. The guests are gathered, the ceremony is about to start, and everything seems in order when something out of the ordinary happens right in front of my eyes. Gormil, on her way to her future husband, trips and flows around about to fall. What a concerned... When, when a concerned servant approaches, she just smiles and picks up the culprit, a horseshoe. Gathan, who has seen the whole scene going down like me, catches my eye and comments, That was surprising, wasn't it? What an auspicious sign. Okay, looks like we have had a daughter. After your modest acquaintance. <laughs> oh, this is my sister-in-law. Why would you call her my modest acquaintance? That's so funny. Let's 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 go with another name. The game is automatically choosing something that's not necessarily the best. All right, Magdalena, much better. All right, there we go. Valuable prisoner captured. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and enforce demands. So be it. Disband all. We do have to hand out some titles here. That's fine. Let's go ahead and select based on some of all skills. Now you, as I recall, you're an evil planner. Yeah, I recognize your face. We talked about you last episode. You're an insane villain. See, all the best characters for, like, ruling right now are not particularly good characters. Grasper. Alright, so you're lustful and gluttonous. That's probably not the best person to leave in charge. We do have a champion here who is... Oh, he's a treacherous villain. Just kidding. Yeah, I missed the sadistic bonus there. I was just seeing gregarious and patient. See, this particular character is already landed, or I'd consider giving it to him. Lots of antagonists and villains. A lot of negative traits. Alright, so we have a character here. You know what? You might be pretty good. Honorable Coward. He's content and lazy, but he does have very good stewardship and diplomacy. He's not particularly good in terms of his martial skill. Also, dude, the martial skill on this guy. What the heck? Oh, it's territory we literally just took. Interesting. Okay. So... Yeah, there's so many characters that are just not that great. Tell you what, why don't we choose... Let's sort based on Marshall, because we're going to need someone who can hold down the fort. So I'm going to scroll down and try and find someone with high Marshall who also has decent diplomacy and stewardship. So we have a Righteous Adventurer, Fernfail. He has really low intrigue. There's also Arielf. He's a compassionate craven. You know what? He's currently just unmarried. He's about to find himself in charge of a lot of territory. Well, we're going to give this, we're going to split this between two characters. Now for the other one, Yeah, evil planner, not such a good idea. Insane villain, not such a good idea. I would like to give it to Regenwald, but remember he is, like, he's in line to be in charge of one of the accolades. Or, not one of the accolades, the accolade. Rapacious villain. So you're a rapacious villain because you're callous. You know what, let's give it to Colin. I've kind of passed him up a couple of times. I just feel like this is the, the one to go for, so...
grant that title, and now we control all of that. What would it take? Yeah, we're at an activity already, so we're going to have to wait for this particular war to end. And then we can declare another war. Relatively soon, we will have the ability to form the Empire. The ceremony has finally reached its climax. The traditional rituals have been completed, and all that's left is the final vows, the formal consent, and the seal on the marriage. As both Memar Kirkon and Boromir, is it Ban Mormer? Yeah, Ban Mormer. Gormil say, I do. The crowd starts cheering, and we all stand witness to the beginning of their life together. Exciting. The formal part of the wedding, the ceremony is finally behind us. Everyone is smiling in anticipation of the gargantuan meal, exciting entertainment, and general revelry that we are about to be offered. Let's tuck in. Enjoy. Nice. Grandeur rank increased. Okay. Every single feast. There's always one. Yeah, we've done this a couple times. So there's a chance that we could get a diplomacy perk here. 64% chance, in fact. Gently exit the conversation. Let's go for it. Nice. Got it. All right, so... Wow, thoughtful. Doubles the opinion gain from sending a gift. Monthly prestige per dread. That's also pretty nice. Children received one to three extra skill points. Groom to roll. Let's go ahead and do that. There are some kids being raised. And you can see that they immediately... Wow. Oh, that also counts for the existing children. So everyone got... Donald just got a... Plus three boost to his diplomacy from that. I am glad I picked that. I thought it was just going to be the literal kids. But it's more than that. Alright, so now there's a fourth duchy that we can potentially... Alright, we've got a couple of prisoners to ransom. Let's go ahead and take that gold. We're going to wait until Donald takes the throne. We just need this particular event to end. So I'm learning language. Nice. The hall is awash with a riotous parade of acting troops, dancing musicians, and exotic charlatans, delighting guests en masse. Near my seat, both High Chieftain Lonan and Chieftain Cassine share their opinions on the display. Do a flip, shouts Lonan at a comforting tumbler. By Jesus, I love a good party. Actors, Cassine moans. Professional liars, all of them. We can stand a few less at such an important occasion. Uh, that seems really, like, brutally rude. You gain 500 stewardship lifestyle experience if you agree with that. That's interesting. I'm focused on the actual entertainment. Let's just go ahead and say that we agree with Lonan. Earl Vane is no longer the master of the hunt. Oh, that's a shame. So I guess he passed away. Ah, there is anything more than jovial, or is there anything more jovial than a good feast? Guests throng to and fro, eating and chatting while flickering and torchlight plays off every wall. Light bouncing like laughter around the hall. Of course, not everything's quite how I'd like it, but that's the nature of these gatherings. Next time, things will be different, and the spice of change gives something to look forward to. Sometimes it's nice to simply sit back and enjoy the little things in life. All right, every guest with at least one trait in common with me gains 20 opinion. Or I could gain 75 prestige from this. You know what? Let's go for the opinion boost. Good to mingle. Fine sculptures, exotic tapestries, strange foreign flower arrangements, and more festoon the banquet hall, a veritable feast for the eyes. Near my seat, both Prince Anurad and Petty Queen Wolfren share their opinions on the decorations. Now this is what I was expecting, booms Anurad, a venue fit for a truly grand wedding. Frankly, I find it all a little exhausting, moans Wolfren. I don't know what's a seat and what's a decorative sculpture. Alright, so we could gain some martial lifestyle experience, which that's where we're currently kind of seated. Let's go with Anna Rod's positive thinking. We made a friend. And we gained an available perk. Fallen Rival. The conflict between Wessex and Dehubarth interested me little until my council's summary of the Battle of Morganeg appeared. Somehow I know, even before I open it, that it contains good news. There, amongst the dispatches, it reads, we confirm Lord, Co Lord Cosnar. I don't even know why I was... Why was he my rival? I don't know why he was my rival. I, I genuinely have no idea. <laughs> uh, he was slain by Earl Eldred, son and heir of Petty King Alfred, in a fierce encounter. Alright, so we can say 
good riddance, or we can say he was meant to be mine, and... Or we can uh, say... <laughs> we can send Eldred a violet. So... Or a violet, rather. So, let's go ahead... My hero. I shall send him... Yeah, sure. Why not? Grand wedding. It's time. So, couple is going off to consummate. Meanwhile, I think pretty soon I might have some more building I can do, because this is going to be done in 24 days. My son, Constantine, has been impressed with one of the household champions for a very long time, so... This is the opportunity to either give him... Ooh, Diligent. You know what? Let's make him generous. Let's do that. We've already raised a couple of kids to be diligent like us. Let's have a little bit of diversity with their traits and personalities. One after the other, all guests are leaving. It's time for me to depart, too. The wedding was a great occasion to mingle with my peers and relax, and I abandoned the premises tired and satisfied, sending my best wishes to the spouses for a prosperous and happy union. Congratulations again. All right, so we gained prestige. Guest to the wedding of the century, which gives us additional diplomacy and diplomacy lifestyle experience for 20 years, and we lost 47 stress and got lots of opinion bonuses. Heck yeah, let's go. All right, so now can I declare? Yes, I can. Now, we can't subjugate him. So, I think the most sensible thing to do here... Alright, so we can go inside again. The most sensible thing to do here would be... to take this entire duchy. Because then I would gain a lot of this territory. The downside is, remember what happened the last time we conquered a duchy? Since he's outside of the realm, there's a strong possibility that the land that we take from that particular Casus Belli would flip back as it did before when we were conquering this section of land right here. So I'll just have to keep an eye on that. So we're going to go for the High, Chief High Chiefdom of Munster. And we're going to go ahead and declare on him because this is going to take away most of his power right away. And then I can do county by county wars as the truces wear off. It's just unfortunate because to a degree what's happening here, I mean, we could potentially like you know, one thing we could do we could go for a claim but there's no such thing as a claim on a kingdom, so it would still just give us a duchy claim. Hang on, let's go ahead and select this. Enduring hardships. Fort level plus one. Enemy occupations do not lower control. Nice. That's only for Constantine, though, so as soon as he dies, we lose that benefit. All right, there is a part of me that wants to hold a tournament, but we're going to hold off on that. I want to go ahead and take some more territory here. Let's go for the High Chiefdom of Munster. Declare war. Raise all armies. And I'm going to march straight for... Oh, wait, hold on. Straight for the capital. Well, I might do a little bit of raiding along the way. Because it looks like there's an army that is moving to attack. But we don't need to call allies for this. I don't need to burn prestige as I've done for so many wars during this playthrough. I don't need to do that anymore. It's just not necessary. There's some raiders as well. That's nice. Blessed of the meek. I was shocked when I caught my daughter Margaret trying to steal from the travel chest of visiting Lord Mayor Sterla. She gave me an impressive speech on how she now understood why what she had done was wrong. So, interestingly enough, apparently it's a genuine speech because this is the humble trait. We could also make her deceitful or honest. So, we are all but small pieces of the world. Yeah, let's, let's stick with humble. Okay, I'm going to send this army here. First army of Fife to deal with those raiders because we could get some gold from them. And it looks like their army is going to fall quickly. All right, Ireland's army has fallen. Made a friend. Your careful education and guardianship of Margaret Aelpin planted the seeds of a lasting friendship. Aw. That's nice. Okay, so let's now attack a few holdings here. 
I'm gonna go along the coast. And we're gonna try to intercept those raiders as well so we can take their gold. This is what's nice about having built up the army to this point. We really have the... Okay, court grandeur level decreased. I'm not surprised. I need to be feudal if I want to continue to improve those and actually have them not go up and down. But yeah, now that I actually have like a large army and I don't have to call allies and I'm fighting against lesser foes at this point, like... Oh, hold on. Hold on. We will leave that army to do the sieging and this one to intercept here. This army is actually moving pretty fast. Somewhat frustratingly. All right, so we can also split the work so you can see that I'm attacking multiple kind of locations at once here. Yeah, so the raiders went elsewhere. We're going to finish off this army here. We're already at 43% war score. We haven't even taken any holdings. I'm just hoping that we conquer or we capture someone valuable here. 75%. Alright, so we did... Alright, that's just a hook. We can't actually ransom him, unfortunately. Okay, why don't we go ahead and take Athlone. I'm just going to have the three armies split up. Makes perfect sense. That way we can actually attack three holdings at once. Haven't really fought warfare so far that way, but now things are getting more complex and entertaining. And we have that option at our fingertips. Also, real quick. Yep, I can construct stuff. I knew it. So I could do war camps here. Let's upgrade the Palisades. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't do anything here. Real quick, though. Adopt feudal ways. 70% of all military and civic tribal era innovations. Let's take another look at how close we are. That is not culture. That's culture. So tribal era innovations... We need 70% of 6 and of 14. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, we're almost done with two because of this cultural fascination and this innovation. So this culture is currently being exposed to an innovation basically by proxy. If you want some information on innovations, here we go. Innovations are technologies and other advances that benefit all characters of a certain culture. Innovations are grouped into the eras where they can be discovered. Through contact with neighboring cultures, each culture is always exposed to one specific innovation, which will be exposed much quicker. So, because of contact with a neighboring culture that has public works already done, we have an innovation in progress there, which is nice. That was one of the things I believe I covered in the first stab at this recording before I decided not to manually create Scottish culture. Interesting. So we have just... You know what? Let me finish the sieges that I have going because I want to see if I can get some gold from these cities. And truth be told, I think... Yeah, there's 15 gold to be found there. Let's go ahead and go for that. The war will auto-resolve after a while here. Notice, by the way, we're still making gold at this point. That's another really nice thing about this point in the campaign. Oh, hello. The raiders are just hanging out here. wonder why they're doing that. All right, a new Irish army has just formed. What's this? What's this? Father! Constantine approaches me, tightly clutching a manuscript. I wrote a work of fiction after reading literature that's popular in your court. Please accept the honor of being the first person to read my words. I accept the manuscript and glance at some of the lines. Every description of the protagonist mentions him having big, beautiful azure orbs, and Constantine brings that to focus even in inappropriate situations. <laughs> I clear my throat and look up for the manuscript, meeting Constantine's expectant eyes. Um, so we can kind of nurture his creative burst. 
My word, this is incredible. You must write more. You know what? Yeah, let's just nurture his creativity. Say, good job. Keep it up, son. Okay, so we... Interesting. This Earl converted culture. Let's intercept that Irish army before they take back Ennis. Bit of back and forth with these armies. I hear the footsteps of someone approaching me from behind and turn around to see Constantine looking all kinds of excited. Father, he eagerly calls out to me as he, as he closes the distance between us. It's done the next part of my story. The manuscript is forced into my hands before I can say anything. A cursory glance reveals more rewrites and continuations of other manuscripts. It's clear that Constantine found a topic he wants to write about. So this will give him a massive health boost for five years. You could also say you're going to stagnate if you only write the same thing. There's a 66% chance that you'll get a huge health boost, but not massive, but more learning. Or we can say, I'm done reading your manuscripts. No, this is lovely. You must continue to write more. I feel like that's the like age-appropriate response for this character at this point. All right, so we have conquered some additional territory here. Valuable prisoner captured. Nice. So I might be able to ransom him. Oh, actually, it doesn't look like I can. I might be able to free him for a hook, though. He's not landed. Okay, at this point, I'm really just raiding for gold and possibly stealing artifacts. High Chieftain Donald's friendship. I never expected I would grow as close to High Chieftain Donald, aw, as I have done in the past few years. On multiple occasions, he has proven himself to be a reliable and forthright man with only my best interests at heart. It's so rare to find a true friend. So, Donald and I are now friends. He's a gracious blackguard. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I mean, he did murder Aid's son, which was kind of hilarious. All right, so at this point, victory, there we go, so be it. So that, understandably, was the end of that war. Now, because of the way truces work, unfortunately, I can't just um, redeclare on Ireland. I have to kind of mix things up and maybe declare on someone else. Now, Gwynedd actually has no like allies at the moment. So taking territory from Gwynedd is going to be relatively easy. We could take the rest of the Duchy of York, which is kind of tempting. It looks like it'll cost some prestige to do, or not some prestige, but some piety to do this. But this is how we'll pretty much have to do this. We need to rotate uh, Cassus Bellies here and rotate our war targets because we're going to fight one war, then we'll have a truce. We'll fight a war against someone else. Thankfully, there are lots of different nations that actually give us the opportunity to do that. However, before that point, we need to go ahead and give some of these away. So, Lord Mayor Sterla of the East Riding. No, I'm not sure I want to do that. Is there a character? Who's this? Irrational Adventurer character I haven't had access to previously. There's also Fornan. He's a compassionate adventurer. Not quite as good as this character. But culturally, he might be a better fit. Although, at this point, we're a multicultural kind of kingdom. The Norse and the other Northmen, like, they're here. And we have several that have served us very well. So, let's go ahead... with Frithricker here. Or maybe Frithriker. Ah. It's a prototype Will Riker, I suppose. So we're gonna grant I'll tell you what, let's let's do this a little bit differently. I'm gonna give a lot of territory to you. We're just gonna hand you those four titles. What could go wrong? I've been splitting them up for the most part, but in this particular case, we'll give all four of those to him. And now he likes me a lot. So we have one of the more powerful new characters kind of under our thumb as a result of that. 
the Kingdom of Ireland can be usurped. Now, I don't want to usurp that yet because we don't have an Empire title, unfortunately. I can, however, usurp the High Chieftain of Munster. I could do it right now. We could also ask your Head of Faith for gold. Um, one thing I really want to do with regard to our Head of Faith. So it looks like the new wife is pregnant. That's not good. She has a physical congenital trait. She's wheezing. I don't think I pointed that out when Donald got married to her. I was just very annoyed. Um, let's see if we can get... Pope Marinus' opinion is at 25. Yeah, so what we need to do at this point... is try to raise Pope Marinus' opinion of me. Let's let's try this real quick. I'm going to send some gold to Pope Marinus. Now we're at plus 52. How directly does that affect my ability to... Oh my god, we can do it. Okay. Alright, so Donald's not going to like this, but he got married to someone that's not kind of ideal. So let's go ahead and request a divorce. It's better than murdering her. I'm sorry, Nest. All right. It is much better than, mur than murdering her. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do the most robust. As we end this episode, we're going to do the most robust kind of character search that we've done in the series yet. We want healthy. Uh, different religion is fine. We could potentially convert her, so that's okay. Culturally, again, that's okay. Let's go with inheritable traits. Heterosexual, so that fertility is maximized. Gender, female. Okay. Check this out. There's a character that is both intelligent and comely. So those are two good traits to kind of bring into the rotation. Now she is chaste. So her fertility is going to be lower. She's an analytic ravener. Then there's Agnes here. Now, Donald's 46. Another thing that might be worth thinking of is if we say maximum age 25, if we go go for younger characters, therefore more kids. And we have Ermenberg here, who's pretty. So there's a fertility bonus, a diplomacy bonus, and an attraction opinion. It's a congenital trait. So that would bring that trait potentially into the fold. But she's lustful. But hopefully her forgiving and compassionate nature, maybe, would make her a reasonable partner to Donald. We don't want we don't want history necessarily to repeat itself here, but she might be one of the best options. Let's say if we were to raise the maximum age to 35, then what are we looking at? Yeah, yeah she's chaste. That's the main problem there. If we're trying to further the family line... Characters that are chased are suboptimal. You know what? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go with that character that we saw a moment ago. Let's go with Ermenberg. It could be a repeat of history, but we're going to go ahead and send this proposal. We're not going to do a grand wedding. He will lose some prestige for this, but it's okay. He's going to gain a ton of prestige when he becomes king because I'm going to make a bunch of duchies and then hand them out and that will grant a lot of prestige. It'll cost money, but otherwise we'll be in good shape. So notice that Scotland's, you know, label is starting to get larger and kind of stretch out across the aisles here. It's pretty nice. Now, really quick before we end, let's take a look at the Empire of Britannia. We need to control 75 de jure counties. We control 44. We need 500 gold. So that particular empire is going to be ours before long. And maybe Scottish culture as well. We'll have to continue to kind of see how that plays out. I'm going to give it another episode or two. I'm amazed Constantine is still alive, by the way. But <laughs> in the next one, I'm probably going to attack Mercia and or Gwynedd. And then maybe switch my focus back to Ireland once the truce wears off over there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. For channel emotes and member badges, look for the join button to learn more. New episodes drop every day but Tuesday at 11 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time, and comments are always welcome, so leave your thoughts below, and I'll see you next time.